when I started preparing for this calling, I decided I think I'm going to do a series of callings on walking. So this will be my first in, the, in my series of callings on walking. So today we're going to do, we're going to talk about walking by faith and not by sight. You know, faith is the victory that overcomes the world. And this, our faith is what's going to take us through to the end. Our faith is vital to us. This message never gets old to those who have been in the kingdom for a while. And it's absolutely essential to them and to those that are young in faith. We are overcomers. This means that sometimes you endeavor to do and to believe things that are impossible with men. As a matter of fact, everything that you do by faith is impossible to those without faith. Our faith gives us wisdom from above. Faith brings grace to help in time of need. It gives us sight of the unseen of the real world. We talked about that this morning. And who is our faith in us? In Christ Jesus and what he's done. Amen. Our faith gives us access to the promises of God. When you have faith, you can see those promises and you can reach out and grab them. You can actually, you actually function in these promises. When you are tempted by the wicked one to doubt that God will work on your behalf, remember something that the Lord has said to you. Remember a time whenever he's spoken to you. He still speaks to us. I know we've been talking when Brother Givens had, he just talked about Mary and Martha and Jesus speaking to them. Well, he was here in a physical body, but now he's here in spiritual body. And he still speaks to us. He does it through the scriptures. He does it through our brethren, through prayers, through times when you're thinking about him and the kingdom, times when you're pondering of the things of the kingdom in your heart. When something resonates with your spirit, that is God speaking to you. And it takes faith to hear God. Yes. And when you tremble with fear that he may not answer, have faith in God. Amen. Remember, there is none good but him. Remember, he always does what's right. Amen. Remember, he gave his son for us. Yeah. Bring up to your, in your remembrance those times when your faith has been rewarded and strengthened. Times when you've been able to see so clearly that nothing can move you, that you know without a doubt in your mind what the Lord is willing and able to do. The times when you've recognized God's work. Remember these things. We're supposed to think on things that are pure. These things are pure. When we have the Lord's table, this is a time when our faith can be built up. It's a reminder that with God, all things are possible. We have to be strengthened to walk by faith, and that's one thing we do for one another when we're here. We're, we're here to help build up one another in our faith. So every time you walk by faith, you get stronger. Your spiritual legs become stronger. This walking by faith will profit you. If you think about if in the physical body, everybody says walking is good for you. Well, in the spiritual body, it's much more so. Walking by faith is ultimate good. I mean, this is one of the best things you can do. Amen. Walking by faith is how you navigate in the kingdom of God. You must strengthen your spiritual senses and exercise them in order that you may discern the times in order that you may hear the Lord when he says, this is the way, walk ye in it. Amen. Then you must walk when you hear it. Amen. No matter what the obstacles, no matter what's blocking your way. Really, if you can walk by faith, the way is not blocked, it's clear. So this is why you got to walk by faith. Because if you don't, then you won't be able to make it. And God is forward to bless this walk. It's not like you don't have someone coming up beside you. God is beside you as you walk by faith. He's the one that's strengthening you. Yeah. And we've all experienced that walking by faith is not the same for each person. We all have different circumstances, different trials that we go through. That's why I think Brother Aaron mentioned the you can't write a book or you can't have a way to do it. We can't write a book on this is how you walk by faith. That's right. And expect that every person can read this book and it works. It's not the way it is. We have a living Christ who directs us. And he's the one that we have to follow. When we're walking, we're following him. And that's the one constant in this, our faith and who we are following by faith. 
So if you want the blessing, you, each one of you, me, we have to walk by faith. We do it as an assembly, but we have to do it as individuals. That's right. If you're young, maybe you're one of these new ones that just have been baptized, or maybe you're still young and you've been baptized a while, or you're older. Each one of you have to walk by faith. Amen. And when you do, the Lord will bless you for it. Amen. And this brings glory to his name. Amen. Romans 4, 19 and 20 is very familiar to us. It's about Abraham and Sarah, and we've rehearsed this many times. But And being not weak in faith, he, talking about Abraham, considered not his own body now dead. Now, he was 100 years old, wasn't he? When he was about 100 years old. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Now, who has seen someone 100 years old have a baby? This is what we're talking about. God told Abraham that Sarah was going to have a child yes. by him, and yes. they were that old. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. So having a strong faith gives glory to God. As we examine ourselves... Can we remember a time in our walk of faith that we have been tested to such limits as Abraham and Sarah were? God was faithful to them, and he'll be faithful to us. I mean, I can look back, and I see where God said, leave your children. You can trust me. I will be the one to save them. If they are mine, I will save them. Amen. And he has and is saving them. He'll ask you to do things that are hard. But really, they're not hard. If you can see through faith, he, everything is possible with God. Amen. So whatever your circumstance, ask Jesus for help. Yes. Whatever your burden, cast it upon the Lord. Yes. The new man has faith coursing through his veins. Amen. You can have great faith. Amen. I thought about this account in 2 Kings. You may not think about it as faith, but... It reminded me of faith. Second Kings 13, 15 through 19. And this is Elisha talking to the king of Israel. Mm -hmm. says, And Elisha said unto him, Take bow and arrows. And he yeah. took unto him bow and arrows. I think yeah. about take your faith and let's use it. Yeah. He said unto to the king, Put thine hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it. And Elisha put his hands upon the king's hands. And he said, Open the window eastward. Pray to the Lord. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, Shoot! And he shot. And he said, The arrow of the Lord's deliverance, and the arrow of deliverance from Syria, for thou shalt smite the Syrians in Aphek till thou have consumed them. And he said, Take the arrows. So take your faith. And he took them. And he said unto the king of Israel, Smite upon the ground. And he smote thrice and stayed. And the man of God was wroth with him and said, Thou should have smitten five or six times. Then hast thou smitten Syria till thou hast consumed it. Whereas now thou shalt smite Syria but thrice. So brethren, use your faith. Don't shoot three times. Don't just pray to the Lord a little bit and give up. Continue. Be persistent. Pray to God believing. Continue to walk by faith daily. Amen. Jesus wants us to have great faith. So he is undergirding this. It's not like it's not possible. He wants us to have great faith, and he will help this. Yes. The centurion, he said, Jesus doesn't even have to come to my house. He can save. Do you believe like that? Jesus said he hadn't seen such great faith in all of Israel. Yeah. Amen. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. But see, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. So if you have faith, Jesus has given it to you. And he's willing to bless it. I was thinking I would rather be criticized for having too much faith. To, for having, Because, I mean, people are criticized for this sometimes. They say, you just, that's just too much. You can't really believe that. I would rather be criticized for having too much faith, for believing what God has said, for even, literally believing God, than to have a weak faith. Amen. Gee, the devil wants our faith to be weak. He wants us to view God as a hard taskmaster, that he's really not willing to save or he's really not, he, it's so hard to follow him. Really, it's not so hard. It's a blessing and a joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. So shoot many arrows, my brethren. 
Every decision, every moment of life, walk by faith. Stay the course of your life here and the one to come by daily walking by faith. Amen. Matthew 9, 27 through 29. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? And they said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. Amen. So this Lord's Day, as we gather together, I know there is great faith assembled here together in this room. I know you, brethren, you all have great faith. Let us continue to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Don't let the things that you can see be obstacles in your way. Amen. Let us encourage and strengthen one another. Amen. Let us be helpers of one another's faith. Let us cry out to the Lord, have mercy on us. And let us answer him when he asks, believe ye that I am able to do this? Yea, Lord, we believe. Amen. And let us hear the Spirit say, according to your faith, be it unto you. Amen. Amen. Now Sister Barb will come with our singing. 